What's up guys, Vital Syntax here, and I'm continuing the overview of the new information that came out of E3 in regards to the Elder Scrolls Online. If you guys haven't seen part one, there'll be a link in the description. I recommend watching that part first, and there'll also be a link annotated in the outro. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the gameplay, some of the fighting mechanics, as well as characters, customization, the classes, the races, the guilds you can join, as well as some player versus player information about some of the features that they're implementing uh, for PvP. So first, let's talk about the gameplay. Now, one of my worries with a MMO game, and one of my worries with bringing the Elder Scrolls to that, sp that MMO space, is I typically don't like the combat that I see in MMO games, where it's a cooldown based, where it's you pressing a hotkey over and over and over, and it's more about the stats of your character, the stats of your items, than it is about skill. Is it about th that? It is about dodging, timing, and actually aiming properly. Um, and the Elder Scrolls, for example, with Skyrim, where you have to uh, you know, aim your arrows or aim your spells or time your attacks with swings of your sword or time the attacks of your dodging or your blocking with your swords, that is something that I really like to see in combat. And it looks like they're bringing that same type of combat-based real-time action uh, to the Elder Scrolls Online, which I'm really excited to see. So you'll actually see yourself swinging your swords, you'll see yourself casting different spells, and you'll see the enemies that you're uh, attacking react to what you're doing. You'll see them bleed, you'll see them uh, catch on fire, and they'll actually uh, have animations for all of the damage that they take, which is something that I think is going to improve the the uh, the melee, the, the magic, and just the combat in general. Um, and that's something that I was kind of worried about, but it looks like they've already resolved that. Uh, you will be able to fight in both first and third person or explore in first and third person. So if you're in an interior area, you might want to go into first person, get a little bit more immersed in the world around you, be a little bit more closed up and personal. And if you want to see your character, maybe see the progression of your character, see what armor he's wearing as you progress, and also kind of get a better understanding of the surroundings. You have more peripheral vision, which is going to be really good for uh, player versus player interactions, uh, you know, PvP versus uh, combat. And you can switch to third person at any time if you want. If you want to explore the whole game in third person, that's up to you. If you want to do the whole thing in first person, that's up to you as well, which I think is the best thing to give the users options. They're also doing a very minimal user interface, so there's basically nothing on screen unless something changes. So if you take damage, there will be a user interface indicator that shows up showing your health drain. If you use magic, there will be an indicator that shows up that shows your health or your magic or your magic or your man or whatever uh, draining. But when there's nothing going on, they're going to have a very minimal and almost non-existent user interface to really immerse the player in the world around them. And I, I love to see this. I always love when games have a really, really simplified user interface that's almost non-existent. Um, another huge thing in regards to gameplay is loot. With every MMO game, loot is a huge you know, component. Finding new items, upgrading your armor, upgrading your, your weapons, upgrading anything else that you can possibly want throughout the game and also finding and selling those items in an economy that's built on real people and one of the issues that a lot of MMOs have is when you kill a boss they drop loot on everybody's screen and you kind of have to fight for that loot well what they're gonna be doing is instance loot and this isn't the first time this has been done it's been done in a lot of MMOs but it's a big factor so they are having instance loot that means that everything that you see on your screen is different from what everybody else is seeing on their screen so when you kill a boss everybody gets their own instance of the loot drops that way you're not fighting over loot that way you're not disputing who gets what you know trading off oh you get it this time and i'll get it next time which i think is uh, the best way to handle loot in a multiplayer or cooperative experience now what about crafting alchemy cooking and enchanting well they're bringing that all to the elder scrolls online and it's gonna be very similar to what we had in skyrim it's a lot about exploring your different options figuring out new recipes by combining different items and seeing what you come up with you know being able to craft weapons being able to craft armor being able to enchant those are that armor or those weapons with spells to increase you know fire damage or electric damage and also being able to like cook and make potions so that you can heal yourself heal your teammates so all that stuff you loved in skyrim with crafting is going to be in, in the elder scrolls online which i'm really excited to uh, to try out Okay, now let's get into the characters, and there's a lot of information here. So there's four classes, and each class, depending on which one you choose, will give you three skill trees based off of each class. And there'll be other skill trees that I'll talk about in a second. So uh, the four classes is the Dragonite, 
the Sorcerer, the Templar, and the Nightblade. They might add more in the future, but those are the four that are in the current build of the game. Now there's nine races, and for whatever race you choose, you get a fourth skill tree. So you get three for choosing a class, one for choosing a, a race, and then also you get extra skill trees for every guild that you participate in. I'll get more than that in a second. So the nine races are the Argonian, the Dunmer, the Nord, the Ultimer, Bosmer, Khajiit, Brenton, Orc, and Redguard. And you'll have three of those races per... Um, per alliance and there's three alliances so i know this is going to kind of confusing but there's three alliances that essentially will dictate which team you're fighting for in the pvp environment and that's the daggerfall covenant the aldmeri dominion and the ebonheart pact um, so if you're not going to really get into pvp much and you don't have to if you don't want to you can purely play this as a pve or player versus environment scenario if you want uh, but if you do want to get into pvp depending on which class will depend on which alliance that you're going to fight for now, on top of being able to choose a class and a race, you can also join guilds throughout the game that are controlled by uh, AI. So you can join things like the Mage Guild or the Fighters Guild or something along those lines. And whenever you join one of these guilds and complete missions for that guild, just like you did in Skyrim, you know, you joined uh, the Mage's Guild or something along those lines or the, the, the Nightingale, whatever you want to do, you can do them all if you want probably. Uh, you'll get a skill tree that you can unlock new skills by doing that guild's uh, missions. Now there's also player guilds, which are essentially clans that you can set up in games. You can claim keeps in PVP environments. Uh, there's guild leaders, there's guild permissions, there's gonna be a guild bank that you can store items in. So there's a very, very rich uh, guild system that allow you to really manage and uh, really, I guess, take advantage of all the different things that they have to offer with a, a, you know that clan system of, of playing with your friends. Now, we've also got uh, two more things I wanted to talk about with the characters, then I'll get the PvP. This. So the first one is a horse. You actually start the game out with a horse, and depending on what you feed the horse will determine how fast it can run, how far it can run, and also how much uh, weight it can carry, which I thought was a really cool idea that you you start with a mount, that way you can get around the world a little bit more fast uh, or more quickly than just walking on your own or running. Um, and also I wanted to note that no matter what class you choose, no matter what race you choose, and no matter what guild you play in, uh, you can use any set of armor and any weapon you want. So if you want to be a mage that uses, or sorry, a Templar that uses a sword or a sorcerer that uses a bow and arrow, you can do that. There's no limitation on what uh, weaponry and what armor you can use based on a certain class or a certain race. All right, last thing I want to discuss is PvP. So like I said, there's three um, uh, empires or it's three alliances, and they're all fighting to become the emperor. There could be one emperor, not like one alliance as the emperor, but one person from an alliance will become the emperor. And it's a constant battle. You know, one per, one one um, alliance might be the emperor for a week, and then somebody else might take it over a day, and then they'll take it back. It's going to be this constant battle to control who has that position. And these fights are going to be massive, up to 200 people on screen. And thousands of people battling at the same time they only want to render 200 people on a certain screen at a certain time because i mean obviously you don't really need more than 200 that's that's plenty uh that's basically as far as your eye can see and if they were rendering you know every player all thousand of them and you know you know they're not even in the same area that you're fighting and you're not going to see them anyway then it's kind of stupid to render them because it's just going to tank your your performance so uh, up to 200 people people on screen which is in my eyes, totally plenty. So you essentially battle for different keeps, and those keeps can be set up and controlled by guilds, player-controlled guilds. And there's also going to be a skill tree for player versus player environment uh, that's going to be based on alliance points. So whenever you do th something for your alliance, uh, whether you're playing as the Daggerfall Covenant, the Almeri Dominion, or the Ebonheart Pact, when you do things to help out your, your, your alliance, you get these points, and you can spend those to upgrade your PvP skill tree. Uh, and unlock new skills and stuff along those lines. So there's, that's, that's all I had to cover, but there was so much stuff that came out of E3, and hopefully you guys were able to actually uh, take it all in and and kind of understand it and just be like, wow, this game has so much to offer. Um, now, whether or not the game's going to be good, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I, I still haven't been able to play it. From the people that I've talked to that played it at E3, 
people that are I've talked to that played in the beta, which I only know like one person that's in the beta right now, so I think it's a fairly limited number of people that are in it. Um, people are saying that it's awesome, that it is an Elder Scrolls game, but it's also an MMO. You know, it's true to both genres, so that makes me really excited. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like or a favorite. And if you haven't checked out part one, there'll be a link at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out. And don't forget to subscribe because I do videos like this every day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.